Now let's learn how to run automation scripts with Process Runner. First, if I haven't already, I need to select the automation script I want to run. From the start page here in Process Runner, I'm going to select Open. Then I choose a script for my hard drive or network by going to this Open from Local. Or I can select a script I've recently used from this recent files list. I'm just going to double click here. Now from this home ribbon, I need to make sure that the script is linked to the proper data set. If use external Excel file is highlighted, the data will come from an Excel file external to the script file. By clicking on this folder, I can choose which Excel file to link the script to. And by selecting from the dropdown, I choose which sheet in Excel the data will be pulled from. If I select Use Internal Excel File, the data will come from an internal instance of Excel called iBook, which is saved within the script file. For run-only users of Process Runner, you may find that either one of these has been grayed out. If that is the case, the designer user has chosen not to allow run-only users to select from either the iBook or an external instance of Excel. Now it is critical that the Excel file which is chosen, whether internal or external, has been properly mapped to the script file. The data will not load to SAP properly if the Excel file has not been mapped appropriately. I can see if the mapping has been done properly by going to the Mapper ribbon of Process Runner. From this dropdown here, I see that I'm currently viewing the data from sheet one of the iBook, which is currently linked to the script. From this Excel data view, I can see that the iBook is properly mapped as it is showing that the asset class will come from column A, the company code from column B, asset description from column C, and cost center from column D. As a run-only user, if I see that the mapping has not been done properly, I will need to contact the designer user to have him or her make modifications to the mapping, or I will need to modify the data in my Excel spreadsheet to match the mapping. Mapping can only be done by designer users of Process Runner. If I need to make modifications to the data before I execute the script, and if I am linking to the iBook, then I will need to go to the iBook tab where I can input data into the internal instance of Excel. Now let's look at the run features of Process Runner. If I'm a run-only user, some of these run options may be grayed out, and if that's the case, it's because the designer user has chosen not to allow me to use some of these run options. Now I'm going to click on Run. And from here, I log into any SAP system across my SAP landscape. As long as I have access rights, I'll be able to execute the script. The SAP success messaging writes directly to the Excel spreadsheet, showing me that I have successfully created these assets in SAP. But let's say that I wanted to test my data against SAP before I actually committed the data to SAP. I'm just going to speed up the video here and deliberately add a couple of errors to my data. Now in order to test the data against SAP, I simply push this test run button. Again, I log into SAP, and now the results of my test run write to the Excel spreadsheet. The error messages are showing that it does not recognize these certain asset classes. So I can make the corrections in my data, and now I could run the test run one more time if I wanted to make sure there were not any additional errors in my row of data or if I'm confident that I've corrected all of the errors, I can simply hit the Run button here 
and now commit the data to SAP. So that's an example of our test run, a very valuable feature. Again, I'm going to erase the SAP messaging and make a couple deliberate errors in my data so that I can show you another run feature. This time I'm going to go ahead and run the transaction with the errors. And for now I'm just going to ignore this pop-up. I'll be explaining that to you later. Again I'm going to make the corrections in my data here. This time I'm going to execute what is called our error processing run. So right from this drop down here, I could select error processing run, but even better than this, if I go to the left side in the center of the screen, here I have the run log of the script that was executed. It shows me the start time and the end time, SAP time, time to write to the Excel spreadsheet. I also see the number of finished calls and the number of calls that had errors. Now I just click on this two here, and it brings up the prompt for our error processing run. And this is only going to submit the calls to SAP where it's found an error in the status. And here you can see that the only calls that were made to SAP were for those rows that had the error messages. So I did not have to resubmit all of my data to SAP. Finally, there's one last run type to show you. Again, I'm going to run this data. Now this time, I'm going to answer yes to this pop-up. This is what is called our debug run. I can run this by clicking yes with the pop-up, or I could select it here from this run menu. Notice that it asks, where I want to start the debug at. And it also asks if I want to step through all the screens or go directly to the error screen. I'm going to start out by going through all the screens for the first example. So I'll click OK. After logging into SAP, the SAP GUI comes up. And in red appears the data from my Excel spreadsheet. This is the OK code here. Then I get this error message in SAP that the asset class does not exist. So then I can fix my error and then continue the process. You'll notice that it's walking through each of my screens. Again, that data from Excel showing up in red. Now that this is finished out for the first call, I get this pop-up that asks me if I want to stop the step-by-step -step debug mode. I'm going to stop this because it will automatically go to row three, and I already know that this call was successfully made to SAP, so I'm going to stop this. Now I do have this last row here, row seven, where I also have an error in the data. So this time I'm gonna select the debug run from here. And now I'm going to choose row seven. And this time I'm going to choose go directly to error screen, just so you can see the difference between the stepping through all the screens and going directly to the error screen. So again, the SAP GUI comes up, but this time notice it's gone immediately to that warning message. And so here I can make the correction in the data and then hit enter and it automatically completes the process. There is my success messaging. That asset as well has been successfully created in SAP. Thanks for watching this video. And if you need further assistance with running Process Runner, you can always go to the help ribbon where we have these direct links to the Process Runner help website. Also, you can always contact us at support at